Greetings folks! This is Building with Buchanan with another tutorial on how to use Autodesk Fusion 360. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a spinning top. And in doing so, I'm going to be showing you a few new tools and features of this program. So the first one I'm going to show you is this fit point spline, which allowed me to make this nice curve here. Uh, the second one's going to be a revolve feature so that I can revolve the 2D shape that I make, uh, revolve that profile into this three-dimensional top. And then I'm going to show you a couple of the modify tools called a chamfer and a fillet, uh, which modify some of our edges that we have and make them a little less sharp. And in doing so, it makes it a whole lot easier for the 3D printer to kind of envision this shape and actually print what you want it to print. So let's get into it. I'm going to make a new design. And I'm going to start a sketch on the front plane here. And now before I get too far, uh, I want to make sure that the top I make isn't, like, huge. Uh, because our 3D printers are only so big. And spinning tops really work kind of best if they're somewhere, you know, between an inch to two inches in diameter. Uh, so that's about, like, 25 millimeters to 50 millimeters in diameter. So I just want to make one half of this top. And I want to make a little box around the outside bounds of how big I want this to be. So if I want it to be a maximum of 2 inches or, or 50 millimeters in diameter, I'm going to make a box that's half that distance, 25 millimeters wide. I'm going to go up, I don't know, say about 60 millimeters or so. It should be good. Uh, now, once again, I can find exactly the point of where I want this to be, or I can just type in 60 tab. 25. Now before I hit enter, you're going to notice that there's a little lock symbol beside these two numbers. So when I do hit enter, what I've now done is basically locked these sizes in. So if I just made a box without any of those dimensions there, uh, it will show me that I have these constraints, uh, a horizontal constraint, uh, but it doesn't actually have anything constraining the box shape. Uh, so a little later on, if I wanted to modify this box or I wanted to add something to it, or let's say that I wanted to cut this corner off, it might give me an error message saying, hey, you're messing with this dimensional constraint that you placed on this part earlier, and you're going to have to deal with that when that comes. We'll talk more about constraints later, because constraints are a pretty amazing function in this program, but it's a little bit more of an advanced function, so we'll save that for another video. Okay, so now I got my box, which is going to be the outside of my shape here. Next, I'm going to start making a fit point spline to make the 2D profile of my top. So sometimes Autodesk Fusion, well, I shouldn't say sometimes, quite often actually, they update and they change the user interface, like where the buttons are and what all the buttons do. So if it's changed on you, just go into the sort of sketch menu or the create menu and find spline and find the fit point spline. So what this tool does here, I'm just going to start, this is my origin point, so I'm going to start there, because I always like to start things on the origin. And once I start clicking various points here, you can see how after I've clicked the second point and I now move this around, the line between the first and second point starts to curve based on the other point that I plan to put there. So I'm going to put another point, let's say about here. I'm going to put another one out there somewhere. I'm going to put another one up there. And maybe put the last one, I don't know, somewhere about there. Okay. And make sure you hit the check mark, otherwise your whole shape disappears. Don't ask me how I know. Okay, so now we have part of our shape. I'm just going to use straight lines to fill in the rest. So I'm going to get that point there. I'm going to go up to the top. I want to make sure that that's a 90 degree. And it's kind of hard to do it without zooming in. So I'm going to zoom in quite a bit here. Uh, oh, sorry, escape and zoom in a little bit and try that again. Hit that and there's 90 degrees. Now, the reason why I'm being picky about this is for a couple of reasons. Um, one, this is going to be the handle of my spinning top here. And it actually, it feels way better if you have like a straight shaft to spin it with. If it's curved, like if it's either if it curves in or if it sort of tapers out one way or the other, then it's it's actually harder to spin it. And the other reason for leaving it straight like this is um, 
if we want to clean up the surface on the bottom here, what we can do is just put the base of the top into a drill and, and uh, actually spin it on the drill with some sandpaper and really sand the bottom point smooth so that you decrease the friction that's going to be going on in there. At any rate, at this point we've now made a line which goes all the way from the top to the bottom and you can see when I uh, hover my mouse inside this shape that it outlines itself in black and when I hover my mouse over this shape it hover it uh, highlights itself in black. So I'm finished my sketch now so I'm going to hit finish sketch and what I'm going to do is use this revolve tool. So the revolve tool revolves around some kind of axis. So because I used my origin point here, this line as uh, my halfway point, I'm going to be using that as the axis that I spin this profile around. So first off, it asks you to pick your profile. If I pick the wrong part, like it's, let's say I picked that profile and picked that axis, we would end up with, well, like a cylinder, kind of like a cylinder, but we end up with this kind of bulbousy upside down, inside out top part in there. All right, so I don't want to select that profile. I'm going to go back and click that, or hit the X mark, sorry, to get rid of that. And I'm going to select the right profile, which is this part that I made here. All right, and hit OK, and voila, we got a top. Now, this works, uh, but I'm thinking that I might want the the holding shaft to be a little bit thinner, and I, I kind of want this outside part here to be a little bit wider. So I'm going to go back into my original sketch and change a couple of things. So, oh, that's fun. It took me to the back view. I don't know why. So I'm going to flip that back around to the front side view just to keep this less confusing. Now, if I want to make this a little bit taller, what I could do is just sort of click and drag some of these points here and just I'll keep going until I get the shape I want. I kind of want it to be a little lower to the ground, so I'm going to pull these a little bit further down. Maybe that one a little further down. Maybe that one too. I don't know, I want it to be a bit bigger too, so why not? Something like that. And this one, I actually kind of want it to be a little further in. Now you notice how, because I have this here, perpendicular constraint, which I didn't have to put in there, it automatically figured out that I wanted that perpendicular constraint, it's pulling that whole line with me. So this program, in its hierarchy of how it can figure out what you want, uh, that's where the constraints really shine. Uh, because there's this perpendicular constraint here, this line will always be perpendicular, which means 90 degrees to this line up here, no matter pretty much where I want to put it. So I'm going to make it, eh, let's say something like that. I don't know if I actually changed it much, but that should be good. Okay, finish. Now, I guess it's kind of hard to tell, but we did make it a whole lot more round than it, it I think the center of gravity got a little bit lower. Okay, so like we got the basics of a spinning top here. This would be a pretty good top. Uh, there's just a couple changes I want to make to it. Uh, first off, to make it spin a little bit better. And second off, it's kind of hard for a 3D printer to figure out what this tiny, like infinitesimally small point is. So I'm going to be doing a couple little features here called the fillet and the chamfer. So let's start off with a chamfer. And what I want to do with this top edge up here is just give it a little bit of a 45 degree angle. So if I give it a chamfer of 1, what a chamfer is, is, is just like a straight 45 that comes, uh, basically just cuts off the corner. Uh, it doesn't have to be a 45, so if we want to edit it, you go down to your history down here, right click, and edit that feature. And maybe instead of doing an equal distance chamfer, I want to do a two distance chamfer. And we'll keep one millimeter, maybe the other one's two millimeters. That makes a whole lot more shallow of a chamfer. Or let's say I want to do 0.5 millimeters. Oh, that makes it rather steep. Um, I want to go back because I don't actually want to make a chamfer here. So I'm just going to delete that feature. And instead, I'm going to make a fillet. So fillet and chamfer, they're in the same little part here. Fillet's more common. Basically, it's the same thing, but it's just a round over. So if I do a fillet of one millimeter, we get this nice little round bit here. So why is this important? Well, as you're spinning your top and your fingers release from it, it's nice to have uh, less material just on that top little edge. Otherwise, the 3D printer actually on the top layer, it makes like a bit of a, a lip, uh, like a little bumpy part which sticks out, uh, which isn't all that good when you're trying to spin your top. Okay, almost done. 
I just want to do one more thing now too though. This point here, we can zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. And we can pretty much just zoom in forever because this program can pretty much zoom forever. Um, here's the thing though, the 3D printer, the extruder which like extrudes the filament out can only really do like about a half a millimeter thick of an extrusion. That's as small as it can go. So when we tell the machine to figure out how to 3D print this thing, it looks at this tiny point down here and says, uh, I don't know, maybe a dot, maybe a tiny circle, something like that. So let's make that decision easier for the computer. We're gonna just going to uh, dullen this point just a little bit just to make the 3D printing easier. Because otherwise, it, imagine trying to print that layer and then this layer and then this layer. And then you get up to this layer, you, you have like a really uneven uh, print going on. And quite often this sharp point here just fails. So to do this, I'm going to make uh, an extrusion, but it's not going to be an additive extrusion. I'm going to cut through it and add a little feature to it. So first I'm going to make an offset plane. So you know how when we make a sketch, we get to pick one of these three planes to go off of. Uh, well, making a construction plane means that I can make myself uh, a plane where I want to start drawing. So I'm going to make an offset plane off of this, the top down view here. And I want to go up just one millimeter from it. That's all. And then I'm going to make a sketch on that plane that I just made. And so it's might be kind of hard to find it if all those uh, orange boxes are the same size. So zoom in a bit, make sure you get the right plane. And you might need to rotate to get out of that view just so that you can see it. Um, otherwise what you can do is just turn off your body temporarily and then that just makes it invisible. So I'm gonna make a rectangle. It's just gonna be a center point rectangle. Uh, the size doesn't matter, just whatever, 30 millimeters, that's fine. Finish the sketch. Uh, turn your body back on and zoom out a little bit. Maybe I'll just hit the home view so we can all reorient ourselves. And you'll notice that my plane that I've made here, that, or that little box, is just kind of cutting off the tip of the top. So what I'm going to do is extrude this box. I'm not going to go up. I'm going to go down. And you'll notice that instead of, if we go up, we are, oh, well, it was joining onto it. But now, because I'm taking part of that shape off, it's automatically figured out that I want to cut that shape away. Uh, so if it's not, you might have to just change the operation to a cut just to make sure you're cutting it away. Hit OK. And we've just made a nice flat little point, which would be easier to 3D print. Um, but your spinning top's actually not really going to spin all that well on it. So just before we're finished, I'm going to add a tiny little fillet to that too. Uh, how big would it be? I don't know. If I took off a millimeter off the point, this one will be like, say, 0.2 millimeters? Yeah, that makes a rounded edge. What about, say, 0.5 millimeters? Yeah, that's a little better. How about we do, I don't know, 0.8? Ah, error message. The fillet chamfer cannot be created at the requested size. So basically what it's saying is, we're trying to make a round bit here, but we, we just don't have an inside space for that round bit to fit in. Like this round little, like this circle in the middle here just wouldn't exist anymore, and then the computer just has one of those meltdowns and says, no, I'm not doing it. So that's basically it for the spinning top. Uh, I could show you more in this video, but I think that's a good place to leave it off. This one looks like it's probably going to spin well. There's really only one way to find out. I'm going to 3D print it and I'm going to give it a spin. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.